What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today on the menu we have 4 tasty mezcal cocktails. This spirit has been gaining a lot of popularity lately and I wanted to give you some ideas so you can make good use of that delicious bottle of agave spirit that you have at home. Also the cocktails are pretty diversified which is a way for me to demonstrate how versatile this spirit can be. So we're gonna cut to the chase and start right away with the cocktails. We're gonna start with the closing argument also known as the mezcal last word. For me, this drink is one of the most popular mezcal cocktail out there, so chances are you already know about it. So why am I making it? It's because even though it is very popular and loved, I hear a lot of complaints about the fact that it is unbalanced and too sweet. So people are playing with the ratios, trying to fit their palate, but there's one little trick that people neglect that for me solves the problem. So even though you may already know about this drink, stick around, I bet you're gonna love this. So grab your shaker and add three quarters of an ounce of mezcal, three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. If you're running out of it and love DIY projects, you can make your own following my recipe. I'm gonna link the video up here. Then we're gonna add again, three quarters of an ounce of maraschino liqueur and three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Lastly, for my little trick, one dash of cherry bitters. We're gonna fill the shaker with ice and give it a good shake for about 10 seconds. Find strain it in your favorite cocktail coupe. No garnish on this one. And there you have it, the closing argument. Hmm, I really love this cocktail, but I can understand why some people complain about the fact it's too sweet. Let's break it down a little bit. We have two parts of sweet components for one part of tart component. That usually doesn't cut it. When you look at Sour's templates, for example, we have one part of sugar for one part of tartness. So here, even though we're playing with liquors that are not as sweet as syrups, it is still a little bit on the sweet side. But instead of playing with the ratios to decrease the liquors or to increase the lime, I prefer to add one dash of cherry bitters that goes really nicely with the marsh, you know? And because of its bitterness, it dries the cocktail down for something more balanced and we don't lose any of the liquor flavors for decreasing them we don't get something that's too limey for increasing the lime we just get the same beautiful flavor balance that we get in the classic last word or closing argument but slightly drier now let's move on to the second drink of the day we're gonna make the farmer's tan this one was created in 2016 by a bartender called Seth Brammer there's not a lot to say about this drink there's no specific history or story behind it all I can tell you is it's a tasty one and we're gonna jump right into it so grab your mixing glass and add 1.5 ounces of mezcal half an ounce of cardamaro half an ounce of dry curacao and three dashes of chocolate bitters. I'm gonna fill the mixing glass with ice and stir it for about 60 revolutions. Strain it in your favorite Nick and Nora glass. And for the garnish, with a dropper, we're gonna add some drops of chili oil. Cheers. Mm. And I look at the template of this one, it makes me think of a Manhattan. So we have the spirit, we have some aromatized wine, a bit of sweetness, we have some bitters. So for me, it falls more into the category of a Manhattan and it falls into the category of an old fashioned. But in terms of flavor, in terms of mouthfeel, it is for me closer to an old fashioned, but a complex one with some orange notes, a dry finish because of the chocolate bitters. And we also have some herbaceousness and bitter notes from the Caramaro. Caramaro, if you're not familiar, it's kind of a hybrid between a sweet vermouth and a Amaro. Hold on, here we have it. Caramaro is prepared with infusion of wine and selected herbs, including the Alimentary Cardo, Chinar Cardin Colus, and the Cardo Santo, Chinar Benedictus. I love that name. So it is my understanding that this is made very similarly to how vermouths are made, but it's thought more like a digestif rather than an aperitif. So it's really round, really rich, really intense in flavors, and it's not as sweet and it's not as thick as an Amaro could be. I really like this, highly recommend it, and it also works really nicely in this drink, the farmer's stand. Now let's move on already to the third cocktail of the day. We're gonna go back to something more refreshing. We're gonna make the Tia Mia. This one was created in 2010 by talented bartender Ivy Mix in New York City for one of Julie Reiner's project called the Lani Kai, which was a Hawaiian-themed bar and restaurant that no longer exists, unfortunately. But the cocktail remained in the mezcal cocktail repertoire, and it's a tasty riff on the Mai Tai. So in your shaker, you're gonna add one ounce of mezcal, 
One ounce of dark Jamaican rum, half an ounce of orange liqueur, today I'm using a Creole shrub, half an ounce of orange syrup, I'm using my own, if you wanna know the recipe, I'm gonna link the video in the upper corner, and then three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Then we're gonna add ice and shake briefly until chilled. Strain this in a double rice glass with crushed ice, but not filled all the way up. Add more crushed ice if necessary. Garnish with a lime wheel, and to make it prettier, a candied hibiscus flower. Hmm, the way these two spirits work together is incredible, and while both are extremely tasty and strong, none is overpowering the other, so we get a beautiful funkiness from the Jamaican rum, the earthy and smoky notes from the mezcal, all that perfectly playing with the almond notes from the orgia, the citrus notes from the lime and the orange liquor, it's sweet and sour, super refreshing, it is a wonderful cocktail. So now, if you guys are ready, let's move on to the last cocktail of the day. We're gonna make an original of mine. We're gonna make the Polar Blue. So, like the name suggests it, this one is kind of like a little flower growing through the snow. It's a riff on the Polar Bear, which was already a riff on the Stinger. It has some creme de menthe and some strawberry-infused mezcal. It is chef's kiss. So first we're gonna need to infuse our spirit and it's very straightforward. All you need is to pour some mezcal in a jar over cut strawberries, just enough to cover them. Close the lid and let that infuse at room temperature for three hours. Then you're gonna strain this through a fine mesh strainer, bottle it and there you have it, your strawberry infused mezcal. But now, before we make the cocktail, we need to prepare our glass and we're gonna dust with some powdered tarragon. So in a spray bottle, you're gonna add diluted simple syrup. So that's gonna be one part of simple syrup for one part of water because you don't want it to be too thick, otherwise it's not gonna spray well. And using the atomizer, you're gonna spray the outside of your glass, just enough to cover half of it. Then you're gonna dust some powdered tarragon over it because of the simple syrup. It's gonna stick to the surface of the glass. It's gonna look pretty and it's gonna smell awesome. So now that we have our glass, we're gonna prep our cocktail. So in a mixing glass, we're gonna add one and a half ounces of strawberry infused mezcal, along with three quarters of an ounce of blanc vermouth, half an ounce of creme de menthe, and a bar spoon of Campari. We're gonna fill the mixing glass with ice and stir it for about 60 revolutions. Strain the cocktail in your coop, and there you have it, the Polar Blue. Cheers. Mm. The notes from this cocktail, honestly, is incredible. I think it's the first time I'm gonna say something like this, but the nose is balanced. There's a lot going on, but everything plays a beautiful role. You get some smokiness, some fruitiness, some bright cold mint aroma, and then the garnish adds a lot of green vegetal anise aroma. It's really nice. Then in terms of flavor, it's really contrasty, like the name of the cocktail, because it's a stiff, stirred down drink, but at the same time, it's light, refreshing, and fruity. It's a beautiful drink with some complex flavors, and I believe it can please as much people who prefer lighter drinks than people who prefer stiffer ones. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Turn that bell if you want to make sure not to miss the next one. And until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day, and see you very soon. Cheers.